Oh, you had enough crack? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Welcome back, guys, to episode 21 of the Uncleanables podcast. Today's topic is a little bit of a controversial one. It's a little bit sadder. Unfortunately, both mine and Dan's nans have died this week. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I can't that. laugh, but no, like, the but timing like, is mental. Yeah, so Daniel and Nan died. Oh, mate, no, we've got to start this again. That was so bad. I shouldn't have laughed. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. It, it was, was... Mine and, mine yeah. and Dan's way of dealing with stuff is very, like, sort of dark humour. you so. got you got to laugh, otherwise you'll cry. Yeah, so... Um, Forgive us for laughing. It's not we're not laughing at our dead nans. It's it's, it's just, the, I'm laughing at the timing. The timing yeah, is it's impeccable. Just, I know it's, actually. I know of another person whose nan has died this week as well. It's yeah, like it's, it's actually a shocker. bad week to be a nan, isn't it? But it is, mate. It is. But um, yeah. So my nan unfortunately passed away Wednesday, and then obviously I've let let Ryan know, and then he texts me on Sunday it was, saying it was actually the same day. My mum texts me saying like that nan is unresponsive. Yeah, she's. We don't think she's got long. <sighs> later later mate, on that day. And then boom. And then my yeah, my nan died literally yesterday on Sunday. Um, Soccer, isn't it? It is, yeah. So we thought we'd, with that being such a unique turn of events, we thought we'd team today's podcast topic with being something along those lines. Yeah. Being self-employed and when, when disaster or tragedy strikes. Mm. And fortunately for our nans, they're both. It's both just old age. Yeah, it yeah. Wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything. Weren't like sudden. A drug we, deal we gone wrong. Was coming. Or no, yeah, nice crime, crime or not. Crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing like that. But yeah, it'd be, it might be a bit shocking if my nan died a knife crime. She'd been in bed for ten years, so <laughs> Fuck. she'd have to have to have been the ringleader or something, wouldn't she? Yeah. It'd be a bit shocking, wouldn't it? Find that out. <laughs> a load of hoodlums turn up to the funeral. Right, so. On. You, you, to be honest with you, you seem to have bounced back pretty quick. I, I, I was I was quite upset yesterday. To be fair, yeah, but, of course. Um, but like the the way I look at it is this particular situation. So to give you a bit of background, my my nan in June last year, so a good six months ago, she had the palliative nurse come round, give her the end of life drug, end of life drug injection. Yeah, yeah. The one that helps you just go away smoothly. Um, she'd been asleep like she had done this time for like two or three days and then she woke up after the drugs after the drugs right, okay <laughs> and she was like as good as new really well, she was still in bed but yeah she was like yeah chatting she was almost like nothing happened like her speech before that happened was quite slurred and, and broken and it was almost better yeah so it's like she just needed a good old like three day kip or something but we don't go yeah. to it so this time round, like since then, we've sort of been waiting, almost waiting for it to mm. to, to go downhill. Even though she'd been semi okay, mm. she's she was hallucinating a lot and um, just your brain, just put your brain shutting it's, down, isn't it? She's just got old, yeah. She's she's had a good life. Run out of juice. Not well, not so much for the last ten years. But she she was I think she was nearly ninety. So really, eighty seven, eighty eight, something like that. So she she wasn't like young. Um, but it's just unfortunate she'd been in bed for like the last 10 years. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You could have had but, memories. But we were waiting for it. So, yeah, I said to Dan earlier, like, it's, I'm not sad that she's died because that was that was inevitable. That was, mm. that was coming. That was to be expected. So it's just sad that I'm not going to get to see her again. Mm. Yeah, it is. Or you can't call her. Yeah. Yeah. But Did I, you use call her and things like that? I haven't been able to call her for about six months because mm. um, we thought she had dementia, but it was never diagnosed. But she forgot how to answer the phone. Yeah. So she couldn't answer the phone. So there's no point ringing her. So I used to pop around there and see her, but she was so like, it was like she was on drugs all the time, but, but she, she wasn't. Yeah. So she was just like away with the fairies. Like you'd walk in there and um, she'd go, Ryan, why is that a bush moving? And I'm like, it's your fireplace, Nan. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's not a bush at all. No, it's just indoors. It's indoors. And I was, oh, in the end, I'm just going, oh, it's the, it must be the wind, Nan. Yeah, yeah, like, just playing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah and playing she'd, her hands. For the whole time she was hallucinating, there was these two cats that were running around the house. Really? Yeah, yeah. And she didn't have a cat? No, she didn't have cats. Crikey. It's, yeah. it's, mate, honestly, the way the brain goes sometimes is, is colossal. Yeah, so she, she'd been slowly shutting down. So, um, yeah, I was quite upset yesterday and I had a little cry in that and that. Understandably. Yeah, and then uh, I'm sure it'd be emotional again at the funeral, but yeah. it's. Um, but work wise, you cracked on today. Yeah, I've I've not had like fortunately I've not had a major busy day, which did you has so been helpful for me. I mean, me personally, um I was obviously a bit cut up as you would be, as you would expect. <laughs> um and then 
I, it, the timing's actually horrific for me because I was in that car crash, wasn't I? Yeah. Um, and my shoulder hasn't been right since. So I tried to go, well, I did go to work the other day um, and it was, I call it a ladder job. It was, um, I had to put bird spikes on top of a block of flats. Mm -hmm. It's not like mental block of flats. It's just, it's just a two-story building. And I had to put bird spikes up and um, it's not hard. It's not arduous. And then I had to scrape some ivy down, yeah? So with a paint scraper up a ladder, all you're doing is actually dri like driving it behind it and just popping it. I'll in tell you it. what, even though when your shoulders are all right, that can be well, that I, can be quite a difficult task. So, mate, when I was done, I was only there about three hours. Yeah. When I was done, mate, I thought I'd dug out seven fence posts. <laughs> and I was like, I'm in a bad way, man. You're not I, quite 100%. I'm still yeah. not 100%. And then, unfortunately, for me, the jobs I do have booked in ready to go are fencing. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> yeah, fencing and concreting. So like laying sleepers down in a bed and it's like, I've quoted it, all been accepted, all ready to rock and roll. And I'm like, geez, I can't start, mate. Yeah. Because I said, I was talking to someone on the phone earlier and I said, it's all well and good me turning up there. I said, I can try. I said, but if I'm, if I'm out of pocket on materials, I said, and I start and I rip down what's already there and I can't put back. I said, you ain't got a secure garden. My yeah. materials are inevitably going to get robbed. Yeah. I said, and we've both lost. I said, so you might as well just wait. Yeah. So shouldn't be too long, a couple of weeks. You yeah, I should be. I've got physio coming up, um, 16th of next month. It's a long while wait, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a month away. It literally is like yeah. just under a month away. So, anyway, I'm going to speak to him and go from there. But I'm going to have to take someone with me just to kind of do the heavy lifting. Yeah, well, I mean, it's probably it's, a good little yeah. experience for you anyway to mm. take someone to jobs that you would normally do on your own and just see, see just if see it pushes it me forward. Yeah. 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 So, um, in terms of booking anything in, I'll be honest, I, I don't really, I ain't really been overly keen on. I just wanted to have a bit of a break, but so I was saying, yeah. I was saying to my partner earlier, like the devil comes for me when I don't do anything. Yeah. Like, I know it sounds strong, but like I'll start. Not that I'm a big drink. Well, I'm a big drinker, but <laughs> <laughs> but like get to about four. Oh fuck it, I'll have a beer. Four o'clock, yeah, and then it would like to, the next day. Because you be know three you've got nothing to do. I've got, yeah. no, I've got nothing to do, and then what do I do? I sit there and I play video games. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, the devil's come for me, bruv. I need yeah. to. I need to be busy. You need to. Um, I can give you a whole list of stuff you should be doing if you want. Yeah, what down here? No, not down here. Just in your own business. Oh yeah, like, no, no. There are some things I need. Setting to Setting up Instagram page, getting all videos and photos for Insta for yeah. social media, but putting I'm... together some deals. Yeah, that's... designing a website. Yeah, I, know, I don't I have need to build it, but have it designed. Have it designed for it at least. Something, something to give someone when you eventually get around to having it done. But yeah, I'm just. That keep you busy for weeks, mate. Yeah, that was it's quite a good one, really, isn't it? Draw the design of a website. But anyway, that was um, what happened in mine and Dan's life. I know, a bit, bit cheery, but uh, it brought us onto the topic of sort of bereavement. Not necessarily specifically bereavement, but like mm. just when something goes wrong out of your control in your life when you're self-employed. And as we said, we're fortunate that for us it was old age and, and it was to be expected, but for someone who's lost someone more suddenly or been in a car accident mm. and has been written off of work and you're self-employed and you've got no income, how to deal with that mentally, mm. like what you, what you were just talking about, um, financially. And uh, I mean, this is, this is, this can this be a huge topic that can go on forever, but having, you know, having your eggs in multiple baskets can be good. Yeah, definitely. Investing early in your career. So every, every little bit of, money you get put some aside yeah either invest in it or or just have it there for a rainy day for when something happens because mate you never know Do you no know what I mean? no no there is insurances you can get in for like accidents mm. um out of work insurance where they'll pay you sort of an average of what you've earned over the year that's pretty cool um if but obviously if, if someone's died they you know yeah it's kind of on you isn't it you don't get that it's a shame really the way like there's it's all, I don't know if it's just English culture or just like men's culture or like what, but it's like, you just fucking go on, lad, get out of here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying I need more time off. I'd like more time off. I mean, for, who wouldn't want two weeks off just to think about it and celebrate life sort of thing? But yeah. There is an element of like, yeah, you've just got to get straight back on the horse and go out there. I, for me. And I don't even own a horse. <laughs> if I sat at home, I'd be the same as you. The devil, man. I'd probably get a day's worth of work done and then. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, like I'd start eating eating away at me. I'd do everything that I need to do within a day or two, and then that's what I mean. 
I'd be doing nothing. Yeah, you're doing everything and nothing at the same yeah. time. And then you don't go gym and then you start eating bad. But I think when you're self-employed, I know like, I do particularly, I don't know about you, but I dream about having a day off doing nothing. Yeah, I do. Like I absolutely fiend yeah. for a day doing nothing. And then it. when I get it, I hate it. I'm yeah. sitting there bored and I don't know what to do with myself and I end up just doing work. <laughs> I said to my woman, I had a, I, I had like a mental 11 days mm. and it was like I had called out almost every day on that 11 days on, alongside a big job and I worked the weekend as well because mm-hmm. I was saving up and she said, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to do? And I said, shall I tell you what I want to do? I said, I'm going to wake up one, like on my day off at half six in the morning. I said, and just st- sit on my bed. I said, just play video games. Yeah. I said, I'm going to go downstairs and make a bacon sandwich and just drink tea. I said all day, and I'm just going to turn my phone off. I said, I know it's like I don't care. I've been it an sounds, adult for eleven days stupid. straight. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been I've been adult in for eleven days straight. I've smashed work. Yeah, I don't care if you judge me for having a day off, but honestly, just a day on my own where I'm doing what I want to do. So it sounds, it sounds a dream to me, but I know I'd get probably two hours into playing a video game in the morning. And I'll be like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. It's different in the summer. In the summer, I'll be out doing things. Yeah. I like summer sports. But in the winter, I mean, I don't know why, but this winter's felt like six months. Like dogging outside is better, isn't it, in the summer? It's just so much it's better. Like, there's, you get more visibility as well. You know what I mean? I'm forever <laughs> wiping frost off the windscreen in order to see the tears. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a funny one. But yeah, it's, it's always good. to, And I think you need to have your down times as well, you know? It's important to have downtime, but then, like you say, too much can be can be the devil's curse. Yeah, de- no, yeah, definitely. I've I've overegged the pudding. I need to shake myself up and get out there. But it's my shoulders really. I just need to find someone to take with me, basically, and stop being a stop putting off work. There's something I wish I think I'd done from the beginning is take like invest in someone early on, mm. because now I'm in a position where I don't want to give the money away. Whereas if I never had the money in the first place, if that makes sense. Mm. So instead of buying another bit of equipment, if I just invested into a staff member, I'd probably be in a very different position now. Yeah, but why would you say give the money away? Why wouldn't you want to give the money away? Because I like the money. Yeah, but like I, I've been, I've had jobs before, like, and it, it, I'll, I'll pass off a hundred and sixty pound job to someone, and he'll charge me a hundred and five to do it. No, I mean like full time. I'm not talking about oh, every, right, okay. someone talking like about on a job time. every now and then. Obviously, you help me out every now and then. That's yeah. fine. That bother me at all because the job pays for you. Yeah. But like, if I invested in someone full time early on, and it was just you never part missed... of the business that I had to pay them their four or five hundred quid a week, whatever it was, hmm. and that that was just the rule of the business. You would never have. You wouldn't miss that money because you never it, had it. you've already spending it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. How much of an impact is it a month to employ someone? Do you have to pay their national insurance and all that? Depends on how you employ them, yeah. Technically, if someone's self-employed, right, and this is where a lot of businesses can get tripped up, if someone is self-employed, so you're self-employed, I can employ you for a day because I'm not your main source of income. Yeah. Your main source of income is working self-employed. But if I employed, like, someone who doesn't work three times a week and they were self-employed but they didn't do any other work other than that technically they have to be employed by my business yeah, because I'm their this. main source of income yeah. and it's like tax evasion almost being self-employed because you're not paying their national insurance and all that jazz <laughs> but personally if I was going to take someone on I would I would just employ them full like full time yeah so books. that's what I'm saying so what would the bill be 2500 quid a month depends on what you pay them no i don't think it'd be that much no no in my in my mind i would take someone on probably four days a week to start with maybe three days a week to start with depending it all depends on the situation and when i do it but i'd want to take them on at the lowest amount to begin with with view to up up that very quickly but you don't want to... Do you mean minimum wage when you say lowest amount possible? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to take someone on because this job's not for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's you you hate window cleaning. You don't mind doing the other stuff, mm. but the job is majority window cleaning. So if it's someone comes in and sees doing the cool roof yeah. clean or a cool driveway yeah. pressure wash and it's all fun and games and we're all enjoying it and the sunshine in our shorts. Yeah. And then the Wait next day the you've got to do 25 window yeah. cleans and your shoulders are killing you and it's raining... 
and it's not very enjoyable and it's not very social because you're around the back of the house, I'm around the front of the house, yeah. we're not chatting. It's very different situation. So I'd want to take them on a minimum wage for a couple of months and then assuming they like the job would then talk about the oh, more okay. permanent um, income It's interesting structure. you say that about taking them on a minimum wage and then upping them because I, I was thinking to myself, I'm just going to apply just to have someone help me, right? And then I thought to myself, how do I go about asking someone to help me? Yeah? And I know it sounds silly what I'm saying, but hear me out. If I went into a room full of unemployed really people... Like a love note or something. No, no but if oh, I went into sorry. a room full of unemployed people and I stood up and I said, who wants to come with me? I'll give you £120 a day cash in hand, yeah? Everyone's hand's going to go yeah, up, yeah. yeah? But if I went in the room and I said who's good with a screwdriver who's good with a tape measure who can help me out do this that and the other I but, need to go I need to do that approach yeah. rather than saying it's, can anyone give me a hand because I'm going to have 15 I'm going to have 150 people step forward from so, 16 to 60 yeah but then it's your like you when it's you, when you employ them. someone yeah. you're no longer doing the job that you do now they're doing the job you do now yeah. your job becomes trainer manager business owner so it's then your job to train them the way that you would have done that job or how you want it done. It's not their job to know or not know. They could be the best brick layer in the world and laying bricks for 30 years, mm. but you do it a different way. Yeah. And you want it done your way. You've got training to do it your way. Yeah, no, I get that. I know what you're saying. I, I, I don't think I could do that yet. So it might, be, it might be more beneficial for you to take on someone that doesn't know and train them up. And train them. Yeah, I see what in you're your, in that In that instance. But the trouble the trouble you'll have is... I'm wasting like you time. Say you, no, you go into the room, you say, we want 120 quid for a day's work. All the hands go up. Yeah. Do that again the next day, half the hands go up. Do that again the third day, quarter of the hands go up. Oh, as in like they've come with you and they don't like the job? Or they're not... They're, they're someone who doesn't want to work full time, but they've they've run out of money, so they'll do the one day... Oh, just top the money up go, and that's it. Fuck this! I don't want to do it. Have you had experience? With and then they'll doing call it? you back up and they'll go, "You got any work?" Yeah, yeah, I've had loads. Yeah, not this, like, not so much this business because you and Blanco are the only people that have really come with me. Yeah, Kurt came with me for a little bit when he was out of work, but that's not. Was he, he any was good? Looking. Was he any good? He was all right. Yeah, <laughs> he was all right. He was all right. But he, um, it's not his industry. He's, yeah, yeah. You know, he's, yeah. He's online. He tried to help me. Like, he, he I, I was just helping him out. Whilst he had no money, yeah, I see what you mean. But um, the last business I had, yeah, we had it all the time. They'd come and do a couple of weekends, and then they'd go, "No, I don't want to do it anymore," because they had a holiday coming up or something, so they wanted an extra few hundred quid in their account. Yeah, just for the holiday. And then six months down the line, they'd call you back up. You got any more work? And you think, what good's that? Yeah, yeah, well, I know we, what you mean. We needed people, so like, we'd yeah, we'd take them on a lot. We were like crack fiends and stuff, like crack. But, but then this leads on to like fucking spending money, man. Spending money on whatever you want to spend it on. And then you get to the end of the year and your car insurance, your van insurance shoots through the roof. Mine's just, my renewal's just yeah, come up. Yeah, um, what was the actual renewal of it? So the renewal was 1600 And what was your original? Last year it was 1200 So 400 quid more. Yeah. A third but, increase. But I have, the policy I had was with... Maybe even those numbers aren't right. Because the, the policy we had was my wife's car and my van on the same policy. Multi-car, isn't it? Yeah. Is that what it's called? But it, yeah. But it'd gone up... It'd gone up 980 quid in total. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, I see. So each, each kind of each vehicle went up. Yeah. Yeah, that is a lot of money. Yeah, so it was... Um, I've, managed to, I've managed to find a, a renewal just for the van for £1,000, which isn't horrendous. That's oh, good. Yeah, I think you like normally you pay like three hundred quid up front, and then I can pay the rest seventy quid a month or something mm. like that. Which, cool, that is good going from sixteen hundred. Yeah, I mean, still, I think it's still excessive. I mean, I've had my license thirteen years. I've got no claims, convictions, or points. I haven't got any no claims, which might be what's holding me back. Yeah, after like thirteen years, after yeah, with no claims. Yeah, no, because no claims. Oh, I had no claims on a car, but you can't use them on a van. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, and. I was insured for the first year and a half. Where I'd done it on my mother-in-law's insurance. Mm. My mother-in-law's insurance. Shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> right, hang on. <laughs> yeah, so I've managed to get the uh, van down a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I've just got to work on the car now. But we just bought a new car. 
Very exciting. Boom. Family family mobile. Family mobile. What yeah. is it? It's a Honda thing, isn't Honda it? Honda CRV, I think it's called. Honda CRV is a great car. Yeah. Is it a, is it the four before thing? It's, yeah, it's like an SUV style oh, car, yeah. but it's uh, it's got it's got loads of room. Once it's upon a time I was looking at them. It's not very exciting. No, it's, it's uh, not, but it's like they come with a lot of bells and whistles, yeah, them cars. Seventeen plate, it's got reversing camera, front front and rear parking Woo! sensor, it's got a sat nav. Electric windows. Electric windows, yeah, yeah. No heated seats, so <laughs> But um, 72 calendar clocks, I thought was... Yeah. It's average for the age, but... What is it, petrol or diesel? Uh, diesel, 1.6 diesel. Yeah, that's all right. It's good for a diesel. Yeah, so... I always find it funny when... Um, I find it funny when uh, people sell cars and they tell you about, like, the, like the what do you call it, um, the bits on the car. It's yeah. like, oh, it's got power steering. It's like, yeah, yeah. So every, every car, car mate... Last 20 years. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, it's electric windows, mate. It's like, I don't even think they sell wind up windows anymore. When I, when I was looking, we obviously looked at a lot of cars over the last few weeks and whatever. And uh, when you read ones like that, you think, this car is shit. Yeah, 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 shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, You've you're got t- nothing better to <laughs> yeah, say yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> I almost want you to go, it's got rolly windows. Like, yeah. That would be more novelty than having electric windows. Or when you see properties and it's like spacious lounge, double glazing. Yeah. Bruv, everyone's double glazed now. Yeah, you just, you got, me? You just got nothing to say about yeah. this boring it's property. Boring. Oh, what's a, oh this, is, this, this is interesting. What's a fitted kitchen? All kitchens are fitted. Yeah, yeah, unless they're not fitted. But that means they're flat pack in a box. Yeah. <laughs> or it's a caravan. But I was looking at it and it was like, yeah, fitted kitchen. Yeah. And I thought, all kitchens are fitted. Because you've put an, you put an offer in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't well, you yeah. put an offer in for so a we, flat? We was house hunting the Come weekend. Come on, the boy. Yeah, it's, mate, it's a cool flat. It's a really cool mate, flat. It's a big achievement. People don't, like, in this day and age, they yeah. say, like, this year... It's a big achievement to be able to put an offer in. You should I be think, very proud of yourself. Thank you, mate. I think to come out of lockdown, I think to cut because lockdown clapped my cheeks, mate. Yeah. Lockdown, like, like I was. I came... Who's lock, what's, lockdown? What's his surname? <laughs> Barry. <laughs> <laughs> no, lockdown was a bit of a, a catastrophe. Um, I came, I just came back from Dubai, um, and then I got a job in a what was I doing? Recruitment office. I just wanted to give it a go, and it was like thirty seconds from my house. And I jumped on recruitment and I was there for about three three weeks and I filled like two positions in there. And then um, all of a sudden, and then like COVID came, yeah? And it was like, it was like the Chinese virus and all this from Wuhan and all this stuff. And then um, every day it started spreading. Like obviously looking back now, it was catastrophic, right? Are you explaining to everyone how COVID works? No, I'm saying about the position in the office as oh, it was okay. developing. And uh, so basically, it's this, it's this virus, right? The start. <laughs> and uh, every day it was spreading. Yeah. And then eventually they turned around and said, look, like all the positions are getting closed because no one's hiring because of this virus, yeah. mate. Like we're going to have to let you go. And I said, look, I said, I got upset. I said, listen, lads, it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. I felt like I wanted to settle here and try this new, but I'll try something new anyway. I think you probably would have been quite good at that. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's yeah. what I thought. So I thought, listen, it is what it is, mate. You've been me. So here we go. So I went out and bought my van. Rest in peace. <laughs> and. Uh, I started Up doing everything. Yeah, I started doing... Um, she's probably driving it. <laughs> I started doing uh, like uh, boot sales and that and markets and whatnot, just earning a living. And then eventually just started. And then I think, to basically, long story short, to come out of lockdown, come out after that with skills, mm. yeah, in order to doing what I'm doing now, starting a business, doing all right, to buying a flat, I think it's great. Um, it's a cool little flat. It's got a loft. Yeah. Got only flats have lofts. And it's the only one on its floor. So it's definitely a top floor. Isn't so it? it is penthouse Patsy, mate. Yeah, we yeah. are laughing. So yeah, it's, it's all Where good, mate. Where about is it? South Woodham. Nice. South Woodham Ferries. Yeah, we looked at a few in Basildon. It's not too bad drive, South Woodham, is it? No, I don't. I, I actually really like South Woodham. So he's got a couple of clients in South Woodham. It's like out of the way. Yeah, it's, I think it's quite nice, South Woodham. It's got a nice little high street. I've never actually got down the high street, believe it or not, but I know it. Mm. I used to work there. Um, it's a good little area. It's quite, you're not far from Malden, but what's cool is, you know this area, is um, Burnham on Crouch. Mm-hmm. I think that's so cool, mm. and to be only like a fifteen-minute tr- um, dr- journey lovely from there. Little walk. Like yeah. if you went out, like if you wanted to go out and spend a bit of money on lunch and that, and chill Burnham's out and have a got nice lovely day. Little high street, and, mm. um, and it's got a cinema. Is it? I'd like to go to that cinema. Yeah, we should go. <laughs> we should have like a work afternoon day out in Burnham. Yeah, yeah. Walk down the promenade and a film. Did I? Is there but, a film? Uh, no, but we could go for a walk down the promenade and a film. Oh, right, Watch yeah. I thought you meant on film. No. I was going to say, I it was on film. film. if you want. No, that's what I thought you meant. It was on on film. Yeah, I can do. I love actually. Yeah. How many beds is your... your one. It's only one. Yeah, yeah. So... Have but, you heard, yeah, presumably you haven't heard back then. 
no. about the offer? No, it's um, we made the offer to the estate agents, and yeah. then it was they said we're gonna put it to the owner and then come back to you. Never a good sign if you ain't no, back. no, no, no. But like they were trying to get hold of them. But what I found, what I quite liked, was when I was in there. Obviously, knowing what I know now, like being absolutely unbelievable at property maintenance, yeah. right? Being like the being best in the business agent and being for a long estate, time. Yeah, that's kind of useless skills to be honest with you, but. The, it, it helps. It got you on tower, though, didn't it? So. Yeah, it got me on tower. It helps, but the property maintenance is better. So when we're in there and you're looking at things and she's like, oh, like um, that arch is kind of in the way of that loft hatch and I'll tap it, it's plasterboard. I said, that'll come out easy. And I'm looking at the loft thinking if it ain't boarded, I can board it. I can put a new ladder in it. I can do the all loft these big, things. Did you look in the loft? Is it big? I didn't, but it's yeah. pitched roof, so it will okay. be big. You stand up in it. And it's just, mate, it's just a... a little games room. Yeah, but how many flats do you go in that have got a loft? None. No, no, no. To be fair. And it's like, and lofts are always pushed for space. But so when we went in there and see it, and the bedroom's huge, it's, it's a real. Size, yeah? It's a funny. It's a funny. Um, it's on a corner. It looks like a nail. Like the whole flat's on like yeah. a, an L shape sort of thing. But the rooms are not square. The rooms are higgledy piggledy. So they're like the, there's there's a wall going diagonal. Oh, I see. does that make sense? Yeah, and then like they they kind of. It's a conversion. It's not a purpose. No, built. it's a purpose built Is flat. It? But it's it's because it's the corner of the building. It's a weird one. So when I walked in it, I thought this looks like a townhouse has been converted. Yeah. Yeah. But not. Barry from down the road's done it. It's like been built like it, yeah? <laughs> yeah. And I was talking to a woman, my mum's mate, and she said that her husband um, was building them back in the 90s. Right. And that's what they'd done. They started building townhouses. The townhouses weren't selling. So, then, so they converted them. So they converted them while they was on site. Right. Because I thought it's a funny state. It just looks like a townhouse. And the windows and that, it just it just give me that vibe. Got a park in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. We've got a park in there. So, um, yeah, it's nice, yeah. mate. So it really it's got a garden? Well, it's got so, a cute, big, huge yeah. communal garden. But and so, it's into it? If you need, if you know South, if you know South Woodham, it's full of fields. Isn't you it? got carpet in there. Yeah, it's I'll not. Give, I'll give you a leaflet before we leave. It's, today, it's, not, it's it? not getting clean, mate. We're riffing it up. <laughs> it's um, it's like a lattice carpet. Well, hopefully they come back in there. Yeah, they. We see seven. Your... We see seven. So yeah. if that don't go, then we're going to go for another one. Yeah. So They're all, all in South Woodham. No, two in South Woodham. But mate, two in South Woodham, one in Wickford, two, uh, three in Basildon, or whatever the maths is, and uh, yeah, like Basildon can't hold a candle to no. South Woodham. It's a shame, really. Some of the flats are lovely, but They're like all this... about the same sort of price. Yeah, about that between yeah, yeah. like between one forty and one sixty. But listen, that's quite good to be fair. I would, I was expecting them to be more. Yeah. So the the yeah, yeah. basically, it's just a stopgap. It's only going to be for a year or two. Yeah. Get on the property ladder, sort ourselves out, and then um, I've got a money coming from a bad investment um, soon. <laughs> and then when I that when was I, meant to be last December. Yeah, that it? was yeah. So, so when that any com- day now, any <laughs> day, <laughs> any day, I'm expecting a call. So as soon as that comes in, then I can um we can sh- um shut up shop, sell that, or keep it, and then um get something bigger. Yeah. So at the meantime, I just didn't really want to pay rent. No, it makes sense. Makes sense. So, it's better off paying the mortgage, did not you? Yeah, like we was looking, it was like thirteen hundred quid a month rent, and I thought to myself, I don't really want to give that money over. So strong. So hey, mate, it's not even bill money either. That's just rent money. No. Do you know what I mean? And you think 1,300 quid a month. I remember I when I was a state agent, we were fucking renting four bed houses for 1,300 quid a month. Yeah. Now you're looking at like, look, like, that's a two bedroom house. Yeah. Like, we'd like, be like, looking at same, two. Yeah, I know, I know it ain't a four bedroom nowadays. Yeah, yeah, but what I mean is 1,300 quid a month. You, that, you ain't walking in and going well. No. You're going, oh, Dan's got a house. Yeah. Like for 1,300 quid a month. It's strong, isn't it? I think it's strong. Mate, it is when you've got to go out and earn it as yeah. a self employed man, it is. That's the, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, you so. want to have a week off. Well, you if you make, had that, you couldn't. Make sure you got your mortgage paid or your rent paid because no one nah, else see, is paying it for you. See, one bedroom flats are unreal. Like, it's the mortgage is going to work out to be. I think the mortgage is seven hundred for the flat. Yeah. So then, yeah, take you still got to find seven hundred quid. I know. No, you've got to find three and a half. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but she gets pregnant, or she gets. God Unfortunately, like she can't get pregnant. No, but... the way we do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. Yeah, no, of course that. No, I get that. It, it's, you have to find it. I understand, yeah. but that's it, is what it is, isn't anything it? Anything happens. Anything can happen, can't it? Well, yeah. So no, like... more so from Emma's point of view, if you have another car accident, and you can't work. Mm. She's got to find seven hundred quid a month. Yeah, no, that's where Plus the bills. So this is where it goes back to boxing clever, being self-employed, and not spending all your money on fancy clothes and fancy watches. Yeah. So you need to have. A, an investment or at least a pot ticking over in the background yeah. or even stocks and shares, mate. Any, any, I think anything, if you can put some money aside, early days, I'd probably advise just having it in a bank account, like liquid, because something happens early days. But the longer you go on, mm. like the busier you get, 
like I, I when I first started and I was making like 700 pound a month and now I have days where I'm like earning more than that mm. so it's not so important for me to I've got I've got that uh, pillow uh, as such to soften the blow yeah. if something happens to me and I have to have a couple of days off yeah but early days you don't have that well, so what are you trying to say? You should put money away, or you shouldn't. You know, I'm saying you should put, you should always put money away. Yeah. But early days, I wouldn't invest it into something that you can't easily access. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, I, yeah, you, but you're not going to be buying a flat as an investment early days because you're not no, going to have twenty grand, no, of thirty course grand, not. or whatever. But if you're having, if you're making five hundred quid a week, try and stick hundred quid yeah, into, into another bank account so at least liquid. So that if you can't work for a week, you can move 500 quid into your bank account and you know that... You can still live. Still, yeah, you yeah. can still live. But as time goes on and you get busier, you can look at investing into other things, stocks and shares. Yeah, yeah. Mate, you need to. You need crypto, to. Crypto, whatever, you, whatever your flavour is. You just need... Yeah, you just need to definitely think about tomorrow. Like, listen, there's even... I met a fella once in Dubai, right? And he was a young man and he had money. And I said to him, what'd you do? And he looked like he looked like a troublemaker. He was mm. huge geezer, yeah, muscly, and he was a bit burly as well. And I said, What'd you like, how'd you get your money? Because he, he had like he used to lease cars, yeah. He used mm. to hire cars out and I hired a car off him. And he said to me, Did you want to buy it? And I ended up buying it off him. And I was chatting to him and I said, oh, like, do you, is this your job? He went, Yeah, you and I got like twenty five cars out. I said, Really? He went, Yeah, yeah. And I said, What'd you do? Like, bearing in mind, like Is it in Dubai? Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. an English bloke, yeah, from up north. But he was like I said, 25, you're not worried about people like chewing him? And he laughed and he's like, listen, mate, no way. Like, I was thinking like, he'd grab you by the throat, you know what I mean? He'd toss you around like a chicken wing. He'd probably enjoy that. Who? Yeah. Shut up, you weirdo. Anyway, <laughs> so he said, um, he said, you'd be surprised. He, so he earned his money initially. Rich people are asset rich. Some of them are asset rich and cash poor. He says, you would not believe some of the people that used to ring me just for 25 grand. Oh, yeah, I completely... Like, like multi-multi-millionaires. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. CEOs of huge companies. They that. don't like having money in their That's accounts. what I mean. It's like, because they invest it all and yeah. all the rest of it, and then all of a sudden, boom, like, something will come up, or the dog will run through a patio door or something and, like, need a vet bill. Yeah, plus the patio door. Plus the patio door. And, like, they literally have no cash. Yeah. So he used to loan to rich people. Tw- he used to loan, give them 20 grand. Where did he get his 20 grand from? So he said that, I think he said his nan died or granddad died and left him 25 grand but his dad I think his dad had money but his dad knew rich people that right. needed money so he said look give him that so all his money he'd done like one deal he's given him 25 and then the geezer give him back 30 and then he just done 25 again built it yeah. up and then eventually it was unstoppable but I said is it right and he went mate colossal like they do it yeah. three or four times a year some of them but then I guess you've got to look scary yeah I mean to, it wouldn't be for me to pay you back yeah, yeah it wouldn't be for me because you know what I mean you only need one bad egg and then you're both having a fight in someone's living room yeah. police get called and it's all game over yeah do you know what I mean? But it's it's interesting. There's loads of ways out there. And also, going back to it, you always need to save for a rainy day. <laughs> That's ultimately what we was trying to get at. <laughs> I don't know how we end up flying to Dubai. No, it's just... <laughs> oh, so mate. you've already given your, your money away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've already had your bad egg. But yeah, so... Um... <laughs> Make Look sure at you, you, I was about to get sure a vape you, out of them. Make sure you're putting your money away for, for a rainy day, guys, because anything can happen. Um, we have got some really, really good topics coming up on the podcast over the next few weeks. We've also now fully prepared to have guests on. So we've got a couple of people lined up, haven't we? Yep. Um, but if you know anyone that could be of interest, yeah, please us let us know in the comments. And I'm going to do a quick spiel about how if you're listening on the audio version of the podcast, if you have a spare two minutes, if you can just leave us a review, it does help us meet new people to listen to the podcast. Um, If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed, comment, like, all that good stuff. Share it with a friend if you've got a friend in the self-employed industry. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, all helps, doesn't it? We're just trying to get out there. We'd um, we'd like to hit 100 subscribers on the YouTube by the end of the year, and then I think we hit 70 downloads a week, didn't we? Yeah, we've done quite well on the um. So if we could hit maybe a thousand listeners a month on the on the podcast. Yeah, between all the platforms. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be pretty. I think that'd be quite. I think it's doable, mate. Little goal. Yeah, I think it's doable. 
But we need your help to do it, so please share, like, review. Subscribe. Obviously, don't review us one star if you didn't like it. Just just close, just press the X. Just email me and call me an helmet. Yeah. Yeah, just ring us yeah. up and abuse us. Or at least go on the YouTube and put it in the comments, because that's, like, helpful. <laughs> but if you didn't enjoy it, just, you know, go about your day. No one asked you for an opinion. But if you didn't like if you if, sorry, if you did like it, make sure you review us five stars, because... We need that social gratification to continue with life. That's what brings us the most joy. <laughs> I had a thought. You know when you just said um, second opinion? Mm. I read something online. It was like it's telling a customer, if, like when, when a customer says to you, I'm going to get a second opinion on it, you say to him, do you want to ask me again? <laughs> just ask me twice, mate. <laughs> It'll be the same opinion, but I'll give you a second Yeah, one. oh, mate, some of them are hilarious. I right, had to, I had to get a second opinion on my pressure washer the other day, actually. Yeah? Yeah, it's still making that. Bouncing. I'll show you the video, yeah, the bouncing. I didn't see the video. And uh, I've had two very different responses from two pressure washing companies. So. Here's a question. Can you put anything in the water? Like what? I don't know, like Fish. an additive or like an additive so it cleans better or like an acid or hypo in the water that you use to no, blow you, through? No, you wouldn't want to put chemicals through your pump. No. That would be bad, but you can you can use downstream injectors so it goes goes through a portion of the pressure washer, like the small bit on the front. Oh yeah, yeah, I see. What you um, mean. But I just use the X jet. But I do it with the window cleaning. Cause sometimes put an additive in to help clean. Mm. But the yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't want any chemical or particularly acid, definitely going through all your uh, all your engine and pump and all that. It's not... Yeah, I didn't hear back from that woman with the stairs, by the way. Remember the, remember the picture of the stairs? I oh, the, the wood the yeah. one, yeah. So yeah. I got. So a, I, thought, I thought you pushed someone down the stairs there, and I got all panicky. I'm like, we're on film. <laughs> I don't I don't go out on the weekend and just push random people downstairs, by the way. No, I had a, I had a, a woman message me about a quote for a. Um, she had like timber decking, uh, timber stairs, pardon me. So she said, um, I've got a flat house conversion, I've got stairs going down. I said, Yeah, you're, you're cutting half, a cutting half house, isn't you? In like South End Lee area. She went, Yeah, I'm in Lee. How do you know? And I said, They're all like that. Yeah. I said, They're all like that. And she said, I've got stairs. She says, like, is there any way to clean them with a pressure washer? And I said, yeah, of course you can. I said, do you have an outside tap? No. So I was like, brilliant. Um, I think she had side access. Didn't have an outside outside tap. And also, like, depending on how how big your hose is, you need to obviously start it, carry it upstairs. Do you know what I mean? Your hose, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It's just a nightmare. I can't imagine doing it without a hose. You, you, can, you, can get, um, you can get the kitchen tap adapters. Yeah, but I always think they're shit. The one I've got works works okay. And also then, if it's not on properly, the water runs down the hose to the yeah, lowest point yeah, and yeah. Like, drips all over uh, the floor. Personally, a job like that, I wouldn't pressure wash it anyway because you can be spraying shit all up downstairs house. And oh, that's what I was going to say to you, yeah. A nightmare. Would I would have you... soft washed it. I probably wouldn't have even used high power. I probably would have just got like a decking cleaner and you can just you just scrub it on with a, with a wood bristled brush, Yeah. agitate it or leave it for 10 minutes and then hose it off. With what? Well, I'd use, I'd use the hose from, from the kitchen tap. Yeah, no, I'm playing. But I wouldn't use it as a pressure know, to fill yeah. the pressure washing bucket because you're just asking for more work than needs to be completed and then you can just hose down the walls and... And you just pressure it. Yeah, and then um, treat yeah. it, sorry. Have you got, have you, did you uh, source a joke for the end of the episode? A joke for the end of the episode? Yeah. No, I, I haven't. I gave you one bit of homework. Did you? Yeah, yeah. You said we're going to start telling jokes at the end of it. I yeah, didn't realize... so, so get a list of jokes together and we'll tell one alternatively at the end of each episode. You obviously remember the conversation. Yeah, I remember the conversation. I've got Just a joke. chose to outright ignore me. It's cool, though. Don't worry about it. Everyone else does. Have you got jokes ready to go? Oh, I haven't. No, no, no. You haven't got one? No, no, no. I'll ask you to do it. <laughs> it's your turn. Go on, do one. You're good so at jokes. So when we was on the viewing... Um, when we was on the viewing, there was a big, like, farmer-looking geezer. Mm -hmm. And everyone had gone ahead of me, and I was there. And um, I'm just checking, like, the last hallways, etc. before I leave. And anyway, this big farmer geezer said, oh, are you going to move in? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, oh, brilliant. He says, um, well, at the end of June, he went, we're going to have a party. I said, all right. He went, yeah, he went, so you can come along if you want. I said, sounds good to me, mate. Like, obviously, we're going to move in, etc. That'd be good. I said, who's coming? He went, no, just, he went, um... I said, like, what sort of party is it? He says, oh, plenty of booze, you know, plenty of fun, and plenty of shagging. I said, fucking, sounds a bit of me. I thought, oh, I ain't going to tell the old woman. 
I said, sounds a bit of me, mate. I said, like, what do I, what do I come? Like, like, when do I come? Do you know what I mean? What time? He says, any time you want. He went, it'll only be the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to lie. You put me on the spot. And I fucking... <laughs> right, guys. That was episode 21. We will catch you next week. Stay cleaning. Stay cleaning.